Welcome, welcome everyone to another Kings of War Battle Report. I'm Visibly Riley, and today we again have the Ogres versus the Salamanders. Uh, the points were 2250, with the mission being Control. Here we see my friend Adam's Salamander list. This time it was a peer list, so no allies to worry about. Uh, we have a horde of Primes with the Blessing of the Gods. We've got two hordes of Fire Elementals, a horde of Gekotas Sky Raiders, a horde of Rhinosaurs with the Caterpillar Potion, a Comodon, three Lachilodons, a Herald with a Loot, double Mage Priest, both rocking Martyr's Prayer, one also having Surge, and one having Helmet Confidence, and lastly, a Clan Lord on Fire Drake with the Blade of Slashing and Wings. Um, I've actually played against Salamanders quite a few times over the past few months as I've been trying to get back into Kings, but I've definitely never played against this list in particular, and I don't think I've actually played against Salamanders at all with my Ogres yet, so it should be interesting. I think we both went for a bit of uh, a similar idea here where why bring regiments when you can just bring hordes? Um, uh, I The things I'm worried about, I'm obviously worried about the Rhinosaurs, if they can get me, but honestly, I'm just going to put big gits in front of them until they die, so not really worried about that, and then Grok can likely put them in the dirt. The Sky Raiders, on the other hand, especially with the Fire Drake, are more worrisome. Uh, the Jar of Four Winds really makes that unit, <laughs> makes it tip top. Uh, <clears throat> the Now, the, the biggest worry I have is definitely Martyr's Prayer. I'm not sure what exactly the rules committee was thinking with this spell but it is absolutely absolutely ridiculous it's essentially a heal seven um that later costs you your character but who cares uh, when most of the missions are about control i mean you're just you know losing a bit of attrition which yeah who cares like i said is um with four essentially 14 heal he can get the rhinosaurs back up to full. He can't really nickel and dime. He's got three fearless units, one horde of 21-23. It's, it's just a lot to chew through. Um, I have foregone showing off my own list. This is the same one I played last time, so if you want a better description, uh, check out the last video. Over here, we see my opponent's deployment. Uh, he has, from left to right, two hordes of fire elementals. Now... The back horde is actually a bunch of Gatormen. Uh, he does have the Fire Elementals to finish these models up, but he hasn't built them yet. The three in the front are actually Fire Elementals, uh, Elementals I built and brought for him for this game. So, a bit of trivia. Next to them, we see his Rhinosaurs, which is just two Stegodons. Not so sure about that. Uh, behind him, the two <coughs> Mage Priests, uh, the base sizes. Still wrong. Uh... The, in front of that, we've got the Salamander Primes with the Herald, the three Lachilodons to their right. The Komodon is that Tedo Echo model up on a hill. Then he has a Scorn Archidon as his Fire Drake. And the three uh, Sky Raiders pulling in uh, that, that uh, right flank. Over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a bit of a close-up of his army. Um, I actually kind of like the idea of the, you know, rhinosaurs being the stegodons, but I don't think two is enough, especially with no how it is. I think he has more, though, so that shouldn't be a problem. He has begun painting. <coughs> um, again, for the tournament, I'm going to in two weeks. Now, I know I said two weeks last week, but I just got my dates wrong. It is actually two weeks from today, or this week. Uh, so I'm not sure he's going to make it, but here's hoping. Uh, yeah, and some close-up of this uh, right flank. Um, I'm a little worried as he's got that hill, and you're about to see I've got a forest on that side of my flank, and since I have no Pathfinder, I'm a bit bottled uh, in terms of what I can do against these flyers, and since he uh, or he won the ability to outdrop me, I actually didn't get to see where these two flyers were going to go until I was already done, so... Uh, you know, happens. Uh, here we see my deployment. Uh, from left to right, we have my Ogre Warriors, again with the Brewer's Strength. The three regiments of Ogre of the Berserker Braves uh, right in front of them. The middle, you can see him just behind the two uh, Braves in the center, is Nomar Garak. To his right is my Loot Warlock. Behind them is a Goblin Biggit. 
Uh, to his right is a uh, Ogre Warlock with the Banner of the Griffin. Then we have Grokogamok's Best Braves. Uh, and then over here on the right flank, we have Grokogamok himself with two hordes of Boomers and another Bigot. The one with the little shiny token is the uh, one with the Healing Brew, while the one on the far right has the Fire Oil, which obviously will not come into effect this game. Um, and don't worry, the, the horde with only two ogres on it, that's, that's not done yet. I just haven't finished painting the last three ogres. Um, my idea with this deployment was that, <coughs> uh, excuse me, was that because we're playing control and I don't have that many drops, uh, I thought I would split my frontage a little bit and use those two cottages in the center that you can see in that hill to sort of uh, shore up against his um, primes. And then once I finish them, I can just run into the shooting and hope it works out. And then on the right here, he's got the two hordes of elementals with the mage priest support and the, uh, the rhinosaurs. But I think Grok can take any of those units, especially with, you know, additional 36, you know, shots, uh, a turn into one of them as well from the boomers. So I'm not super worried about it. And I think I can actually take it. And if I need a bit more support, one of the braves can always shift over, uh, which is why I put Grok's, uh, Grok and Mok's finest braves in the center of the field so they can, you know, go wherever I need them. Uh, <coughs> excuse me again. Uh, over here we just see a close-up of some of my models. Um, I'm not sure I got that many close-ups in the last battle report, but this is my first attempt at multi-basing. Um, I'm, you know, messing around with a bunch of new materials, and these are all some pretty quick models, but I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. Yeah, we can see some of them. I haven't done the bases yet on any of the warlocks, as you can see. Uh, yeah, those Grok and Mox Finders Braves, all their conversions and stuff doesn't really fit with the army, so uh, unfortunately I'm just going to have to cut those models soon. Yep, and lastly, the right flank. Uh, here's turn one. <coughs> My opponent actually won this roll as well, so he's forcing me to go first, which kind of sucks as I don't have that much shooting, so I can't really reach out and, and touch him and punish him for that. Uh, and I'm not going to get that crucial last, last turn... Uh, dash to push into the zones to try to win that way so we'll see if i can put out enough damage though here's my movement forward you get a real good look at this frankly terrible terrible map that we are finding ourselves playing on today but you know whatever we're playing in the clouds um i have on the left push forward with the both the um hordes of boomers with grok in the front the idea here is that he just doesn't have that much shooting uh, in general, and especially on that, on my left flank. Um, so I'm not super worried about Grok being in the front there, especially as I want him to be a threat right from the get-go. Um, the boomers on the left marched, while the ones on the right just uh, pivoted and moved, I think, to keep pace with everything. In the center, I pushed a bit more aggressively with uh, the Braves pushing against the Rhinosaurs, not quite in their charge range, a little out, while my all my other Braves push forward. On the right flank, I kind of uh, realized here that I'd made a pretty big error in my deployment, uh, and then made it worse by pushing into the right even harder. So I put this regiment of Braves up because I pushed my Warriors forward, realizing that it would just take too long to reform back into the center with them. Uh, unfortunately, I also messed up and, you know, didn't throw no more over there or give them any inspiring. So uh, if he gets some <clears throat> lucky rolls on his shooting, I am going to be in a world of hurt. Here we see my shooting. I threw some lightning bolts at, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at the rhinosaurs, managing two whopping wounds on them. And here we see that I threw some lightning bolts at his Komodon, but that thing is indestructible, so why bother? Uh, his turn one, by the way, the rhinosaurs were obviously fun. His turn one, the pterodon, or not pterodons, uh, what are they called? Gecko Toss Sky Raiders move forward with the Fire Drake to shoot down those braves right in front of them. The uh, Fire Elementals shifted a little bit to be into the woods, while the Rhinosaurs did not go forward, because why bother when you've got me outgunned and you're going to get that last turn? <coughs> Here we see the Gekotas put four wounds onto... Oh, no, no, this is not the Gekotas. This is the uh, Clanloid. The Clanloid put four wounds onto my Braves in the front. 
um, which is not quite enough for them to be worried, but still decent enough. The Gecko Tods put on a mighty four additional wounds, which was not the best dice, so that's a bit lucky. Then the Lakilodons and Komodon open up on them and get get me up to 15 wounds, puts me on double ones. And poof, they're gone. So I lost one of my regiments in exchange for not a whole lot. I'm not in a great position. The warriors can't charge anything, and I'm all on my own over there, so not great. Here we see my turn two. Oh, I, it looks like I also suffered a sweet extra wound on one of these regiments of... Uh, of Braves as well, but that one, those were all fine. Uh, he also ended up healing the two wounds <coughs> on the Rhinosaurus using Martyr's Prayer, but I didn't take a picture of it. Uh, here we see my movement forward. I threw the Boomers up. Uh, one of them could not march over that uh, over that wall, so it got you know caught up there. Grok uh, ended up marching over the hill and ending up where he is in front of his uh, Chosen. Then I decided to chaff up the rhinosaurs and uh, one of the hordes of elementals, leaving just one uh, to mess around with. My idea was that he can charge or sit still. Either way, Grok can charge him, and at best, he can surge one, that last horde of elementals into Grok, and I'm not super worried about that. I think he can take that charge. Um, I also got to uh, got the leftmost, the one on the hill, those boomers are in range to shoot the uh, closest fire elementals to me, so that's nice. I moved my right flank up. Uh, you can see the warriors just put their flank to the uh, wall right there and face off against the lord and the gekota. Uh, I moved my two regiments of braves um, forward to try to tempt the primes, and my three warlocks uh, make a uh, bit of a wall behind them. Here we see, yeah, close up of the goblins. I painted, oof, I painted those guys in, I think, 2004, the summer of 2004. It's been a long time. Look at those sweet goblin green bases. Uh, this is just, yeah, this is just a better shot of what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, here, <coughs> through lightning bolt, a mixture of lightning bolts, the and the boomers, I end up putting ten wounds on these uh, on these fire elementals. Uh, but uh, I didn't roll the 7. Didn't even need the reroll. Didn't get it. Yep, another picture of that. Uh, here, you can see I, I threw a lightning bolt onto one of the Lachilodons, put three wounds on it, but didn't get the, I think, 8 I needed. Uh, I actually rolled a 10 first to kill it, which was unfortunate because then I had to reroll, and 8's not all that likely. I would have preferred just to waver it instead of, you know, get the kill and get the reroll nothing. But, you know. Over here, we can see that he has backed off with his rhinosaurs, not wanting to fall for Grok's cunning trap of standing directly in front of them. But he did charge me with the fire elementals. Um, the ones directly in front of the, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the goblin there are planning to get surged into him, so uh, I'm sure that'll happen. Uh, over here, you can see that the clan lord has moved around my back, which is not great for me while the Gekwatas Sky Raiders have charged into the flank of that regiment sitting on one wound right in front of them. So, again, this is not looking great for the Yogu so far. Uh, these Fire Elementals, yeah, obviously both of them just blow through the goblins, or the bigots. Uh, my opponent actually made a mistake with the three Fire Elementals with the ten wounds that have moved forward. Um, he could have resolved that combat first, pushed forward, and then been able to have a bit of a choice with what to do with the other Fire Elementals, but... He didn't, uh, he resolved them in, I think, the wrong order. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think I would have had those fire elementals just pivot uh, as they, as you see them anyway, so not that big of a loss. Uh, yeah, and this is the role for his Gekwitas Sky Raiders in my flank. This is the, uh, I think, the first set of dice for them. Uh, it doesn't go better with the second set. He ends up putting a mighty four wounds on me uh, and does nothing, so... This is about when my opponent decides to concede the game, but since I was uh, doing a battle report, I didn't want to take the concession, and I convinced him to keep playing anyway. He is also shot into the other regiment of Berserker Braves, uh, put seven wounds on him, but they didn't break. My turn three. Uh, yep, we see I send the Berserker Braves into the primes that are pushed forward. 
did I? No, I'm sorry. This is a uh, woof uh, missing picture here. Uh, the Berserker Braves here charged in, or countercharged the Gecko Toss Sky Raiders. I ended up buffing them with uh, Nomar, giving them uh, or healing them for their wounds up on top of casting Drain Life with the uh, with the loot guy. I think also with the uh, the flag, just to make sure those Sky Raiders were gone. After killing them, I reformed, and he ended up countercharging me with these uh, these primes. Uh, it's unfortunate I lost I lost some pictures here because I'm not sure what happened on the left, but we'll see soon enough. Nope, this is the goblin again. Okay. So, okay, some things out of order here. Oof. Okay, sorry about that. A uh, bit of out of order pictures. So here we see. Yeah, like I said, I move with uh, Grok and the all the wizards to spam down the gecko top. Um, I end up healing off. Uh, most of the wounds, uh, all of them from the the unit that's in the Gecko Tower right now, and then I think four of them from the other regiment, so pretty good with the Drain Life. Um, Grok and Mox find his Braves, and Grok end up going into the <clears throat> File Mental, sitting on ten wounds to finish them off, while my Boomers move forward to shoot the other File Mentals. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, here we see I got, yeah, Grok, or Nomar got the that little corn dog token represents the uh, vicious that he gives out. And that three wounds, yeah, I did heal four off the regiment in the front there. <coughs> Excuse me again. Yep, this is dead, dead gecko top. Uh, over here, yeah, no more, or Grok, man, I'm going to get them confused. Uh, Grok Gumak and his finest braves easily make short work of those fire elementals right in front of them. Unfortunately, the other one, even with the double boomer horde there, only manage seven wounds onto them, so not really enough. Then I didn't see... Now, here's where I made a mistake, uh, obviously, as you can tell from this picture. I decided to advance forward with Grok Gumak's braves because I didn't want Grok to get charged by the rhinosaurs. Uh, this was not really necessary, as I could have just backed off with Grok. I then compounded the problem by backing off with Grok, thus leaving room for these fire elementals to flank charge me as I went three inches forward, which was perfect to put them into my flank instead of front. Uh, I also didn't see that the rhinosaurs could uh, sort of cross the streams and charge this boomer horde over here, so just sloppy work by me. Uh, here... <coughs> <laughs> yeah, here we see he shoots at my, uh, what is it, Banner the Griffin, Warlock, and puts 12 wounds on him using the three Lachilodon, so yeah, he's not doing well. Uh, the Clan Lord charged into the rear of my last unit, of, or last regiment of Braves, so not looking great for them either. Yep. And yeah, the Clan Lord easily kills him, drops him out. Uh, let's see, yep, and then the Salamanders uh, easily kill the other regiment. Uh, actually, not so easily. He got some pretty clutch rolls here. Um, it's not, you know, it's this, is, this was definitely uh, a turn of blunders for me, especially after I had an opponent wanting to concede. But, yeah, he also got some hot dice right here in this combat, which is something I did not need, especially with that many flanks and rears I took. Um, but I did get lucky here. He only puts 12 wounds onto the Braves, and on the reroll break check, he doesn't break them. And I heal one from Iron Resolve, so that's lucky. Uh, a bit more luck is that my Boomer Regiment with the Fire Oil takes 11 wounds and holds against the Rhinosaurs, so yeah, nice stuff. Uh, my turn four. Now, to make up for that oof, really huge mistake that was turn three, we're going to have to do some real work here. Uh, my warriors charge into the primes over the wall so they'll be hindered, uh, while my warlocks sort of shift places so I can, you know, drain life and um, bane chant to get that vicious. Um, Grok himself charges into the flank of the fire elementals, and I decide to go for this cheeky maneuver over here, where he has both of his priests who have taken wounds due to Martyr's Prayer lined up in a row for me. Uh, they're three inches apart which means that as long as I can kill one and roll a three on the overrun, I will drop both of these and be able to turn uh, to, well, I mean, my Boomer Regiment <coughs> is probably going to die, but I can turn and save the other one while Grok finishes off these Fire Elementals. So that's the plan there. 
Uh, here we see, yeah, I'm definitely in that Skink Priest. Mm, yep, and it's another close-up of that charge. Uh, yeah, this is to show that my boomers, uh, the, the free ones, or the ones that weren't wavered, uh, decided to take some shots on the Rhinosaurs, putting four wounds on them. But, yeah, that doesn't go anywhere, obviously. They're dash 18, I want to say. Um, here, what are we seeing? Oh, yeah, this is uh, this must be his turn. So, yes, I put 12 wounds with my warriors onto that uh, Saurus uh, horde. Or, not Saurus, oh, man, my brain onto that uh, Prime Horde, but unfortunately, even with Brutal, wasn't able to uh, to get the Wavered, or, or maybe, maybe I did get the Wavered here? No, I don't think I got the Wavered here. Wait, who knows? Uh, either way, it was on the reroll because I killed them the first time, so... Uh, yeah, here, over here we just see the back line shuffling around. This was pretty much all of his movement this turn since he was just charging and countercharging. Uh, over here, yep, we see that Grok totally obliterates those fire elementals. And again, these pictures are a little out of order for some reason. Um, unfortunately, Grok's finest braves do kill that skink priest, but don't roll the three that they need to get the other one. So now I'm sort of up, uh, up shit creek, especially as I chose to do Grok's combat first. Again, I just made fun of my opponent's, uh, choice of order of combats, and then I go and make a huge blunder like this. I should have done Grok's Finest Braves to figure out where they were going to be, then done Grok to see whether I wanted him to face towards the Rhinosaurs to finish them off, or towards uh, the center of the table, as you can see him doing there. Uh, yeah, obviously the Rhinosaurs go back into the wounded uh, uh, Boomers uh, to finish them off. I believe uh, right here you can see the dice for a fireball that my opponent cast. Uh, doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, he ends up with the triple Achillodon and the Komodon, uh, actually, yeah, ended up, uh, what is that, another five wounds onto Grok's Finest Braves, uh, two wounds onto Nomar, and poof, Grok's Finest Braves are gone, and poof, the, uh, boomers on 11 wounds, I think, take a further 11 wounds and are easily killed. Not looking good as my, uh, last, last horde of boomers are facing off against, uh, huh essentially unwounded rhinosaurs and grok is facing the wrong way uh yes uh the clan lord ends up killing off my loot uh warlock pretty easily um and faces off against the warriors and the <coughs> again sorry uh uh nomar yeah it does look like i actually uh, did waver that uh prime horde with my warriors so it's not all that bad uh you can see their wound die off to the right there but i'm not sure how many they actually have on them my turn five. Ooh, 11. That is not good. So it looks like they ate some, uh, s some sweet shooting as well. Yeah, I actually send the Boomer Horde. Well, this picture is out of order. Man, they're all out of order today. Uh, this Boomer Horde goes into the Rhinosaurs and, uh, yeah, just straight kills them. So that is very lucky. Uh, if that hadn't happened, I was completely out of the game rather than, you know, simply losing horrifically as I am now. Uh, I send uh, Nomar through a cheeky little gap between the clan lord and um, the warriors who are wavered due to shooting into the Salamander Primes and waver them again, only putting out one wound. So, you know, Nomar's coming. Uh, but then the warriors are easily killed off, I believe, by mass shooting? Yep, looks like mass shooting to me. Uh, over here, we can see that uh, Grok has run off to try to salvage this game while the boomers uh, stare down this last gang priest uh, who unfortunately is stopping me from pushing deeper into his side of the field. So, uh, man, I wish I'd rolled that three. Uh, yep, this is the... Oh, man, these pictures. Uh, this is the clan lord into the flank of the warriors. He... Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you saw the picture before. He dusts them as, you know, you're likely to see. Nomar is actually facing the wrong way. Uh, he doesn't play well to the front, so um, a lot of times he's facing. But he's facing towards the primes, not towards the clan lord. Uh, as you can see here, yeah, Nomar actually takes an additional six wounds from shooting during his turn, but uh, does not falter. He is quite the beast. Uh, here we see... Uh, Grok facing off against a bunch of little skinkies, uh, mostly because that Salamander pr uh, Prime Horde that was right right in front of him 
is evaporated. Yeah, he pulls off a cheeky little nimble charge, gets into their flank, and kills him. But I only have uh, three scoring units at this point, so it's a little too, too little too late, uh, I think. The boomer, last boomer horde, yeah, I pop the healing brew to heal one wound off because I can and kill that little skink priest in front of me, or what are they called, mage priest in front of me. Um, so they're gone. And here we can see the the final order. Uh, my opponent just rolls to see if we're going to get a turn 7 before he moves, which I'm okay with because it was getting a little late. Um, and no, there is no turn 7. So this is what you see at the very end. Uh, you can see that I have Grokagamok and no more Grok uh, on top of the Boomer Horde with a Healing Brew off, um, off to camera left. So that's okay for points-wise. He has... The Clan Lord on Fire Drake, the three Lakilodons, the Komodon, and the uh, Herald. Um, so it's actually really bloody, but yeah, he, he's got me here. Uh, you can see the Komodon has his quarter uh, due to being unit strength one. My uh, Nomar has his quarter due to being uh, actually slightly off uh, from the Fire Drake, uh, which was a bit of a mistake. Um, the Fire Drake claims two for himself, and then the three Lakilodons just, um, you know, stop Grok from getting his, and in fact get their own, and then the Boomers have theirs, so, yeah, here's, uh, yeah, picking up his Clash of Kings book, a lot of good it did me, uh, and here's the results, we have the Ogres getting two VP versus the Salamanders four VP, uh, Salamanders get a Pretty tasty win there. I didn't uh, tabulate out the attrition score, but I think I actually have him there. Uh, I've got, what is that? Nomar is 100, or 270, 140, or Nomar is 140, Grok is 270, and the Boomer Horde is somewhere around 200. So I think I've probably got him, or maybe we're closer than I thought. Uh, but yeah, my thoughts on the game were, man, I, I've just not been playing well at all this month. Um, all these flank charges, I just, I don't need to be taking them. I'm so used to playing armies like Goblins or Ratkin or my Empire of Dust who just have enough bodies on the field that I don't have to take these flank charges. But I have to get back into the uh, the idea of an elite army here where I need to be, you know, holding back a bit more and just weathering the storm so I can get up the field as a battle line to turn off these, uh, these flank charges I keep taking. So... You know, I just, I'm just not the most uh, patient of dudes, I guess. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we'll probably have another battle report next week and maybe uh, something a little special. So thanks again. Hope to see you again. Hope to see you then.